end this threat to order. Is this the glory of God? You... Two enigmatic figures emerge from the labyrinth of religious and political intrigue that colored ancient Judea during the time of Jesus, Ananias and Caiaphas. Often reduced to mere footnotes in the overarching Christian narrative, these two high priests played decisive roles that irrevocably changed the course of religious history. What motives and ambitions fueled these men to be key players in the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus Christ? This video embarks on an explorative journey to unravel the complexities of Ananias and Caiaphas, two priests who, willingly or not, had a hand in shaping Christianity as we know it. Historical Context of Judea Under Roman Rule Judea, a region south of ancient Palestine, was a land of both religious fervor and political volatility during the first century AD. At the epicenter of this intense atmosphere stood Jerusalem, a city that was not just a political capital, but also a religious stronghold. The temple in Jerusalem was a place of great importance, serving as the primary center for Jewish worship, ritual sacrifices, and religious teachings. It held a unique position in the socio-political fabric of Judea, being both a symbol of national identity and a conduit for religious authority. During this time, the region was under Roman occupation, following its annexation in 63 BC by Pompey the Great. The Roman Empire was keen to maintain control over this strategically valuable territory, given its proximity to Egypt, an essential source of grain for Rome. However, the Romans were also pragmatic rulers, understanding that the best way to control Judea was by allowing a degree of autonomy, especially in religious matters. Thus, the local Jewish leaders were given responsibility for maintaining order, particularly in and around the temple. The Roman governance model created a complex power dynamic between the Roman authorities and the Jewish religious leadership. On one hand, the Romans installed a Roman governor to oversee the region, ensuring that taxes were collected and that Roman laws were enforced. On the other hand, they also worked closely with a council of Jewish leaders, called the Sanhedrin, to manage religious affairs and maintain civil order. The Sanhedrin was presided over by the high priest, a position of immense significance that straddled the boundary between religious duties and political responsibilities. This structure made the high priest an individual of considerable power, serving as an intermediary between the Roman rulers and the Jewish populace. Given this delicate balance of power, the high priest needed to be a skilled diplomat as well as a religious leader. Any miscalculation or aggressive stance against Roman rule could trigger severe repercussions, not just for the individual but for the entire Jewish community. Consequently, many high priests of the time were seen as collaborators by their fellow Jews, especially by groups like the Zealots, who vehemently opposed Roman rule. The Sanhedrin and the high priest were thus often caught in a precarious situation, attempting to placate a foreign power while trying not to alienate their base of religious and social support. It was in this intricate web of religious devotion and political necessity that Ananias and Caiaphas operated. The Roman occupation was not just a backdrop, but a catalyst that significantly influenced their actions and decisions. Within this context, their roles gain additional layers of complexity, shaped by the necessity to maintain stability in a region boiling with religious tension and political unrest. Who Ananias and Caiaphas were, along with their significance. Ananias and Caiaphas were two high priests who played pivotal roles in the religious and political milieu of first century Judea, particularly in Jerusalem. Both men were members of the Sadducee sect, a religious group known for their aristocratic leanings and more literal interpretation of the Torah. The Sadducees did not believe in the resurrection of the dead, a belief that set them apart from other Jewish sects like the Pharisees. Their status as high priests granted them unparalleled influence in religious matters, including the administration of the temple in Jerusalem, where they supervised sacrifices and ensured the compliance with religious laws. Ananias, also known as Annas, was the first of the two to hold the high priesthood. He assumed office around 6 AD, during the government of Quirinus, the governor of Syria, and remained in power until about 15 AD. Ananias was not just a religious leader. His role had significant political ramifications as well. 
The high priesthood was a position that wielded considerable authority, as the temple was not only a religious hub, but also a center of socio-political power. Ananias established a system that enabled a sort of religious dynasty, ensuring that members of his family would continue to hold significant power long after he had left the office. His influence reached into various sectors of Jewish society. He even had control over temple taxes and the activities of money changers within the temple precincts. These activities were so extensive that they eventually led to controversy, including the biblical episode where Jesus expels money changers and animal sellers from the temple. Caiaphas, on the other hand, was Ananias' son-in-law, having married his daughter. He served as high priest from around 18 AD. His relationship with Ananias was not merely familial, but also deeply political and religious. As high priest, Caiaphas inherited not just a religious role, but also a politically charged position that required careful negotiation with both Roman authorities and different Jewish factions. He continued the policies of his father-in-law, maintaining the delicate balance between appeasing Roman authority and placating the Jewish populace. Both Ananias and Caiaphas were part of an elite and wealthy class. Their affluence and aristocratic status allowed them a degree of comfort and privilege, but it also drew the ire of those who saw them as corrupt or morally compromised. However, the opulence should not overshadow their complex roles and the weighty responsibilities they carried. Both men were tasked with preserving order and religious practices in a land under foreign occupation, a mission fraught with peril given the constant threat of rebellion and the ever-watchful eyes of their Roman overlords. These high priests were not just ceremonial figures, they were instrumental in the events that led up to the crucifixion of Jesus. They were part of the Sanhedrin, the council that ultimately decided to arrest Jesus and bring him to trial. Caiaphas is notably remembered for his prophetic, albeit politically motivated statement, that it would be better for one man to die for the people than for the whole nation to perish. This statement encapsulated the fraught relationship between the Jewish leadership and the Roman authorities. Any messianic claim or popular movement like that of Jesus posed a real threat to both Roman control and the existing Jewish religious establishment, the life, actions, and influence of Ananias. Ananias, also known as Annas in some biblical texts, was a highly influential but controversial figure in first century Judea. He ascended to the high priesthood around 6 AD and held this significant position until approximately 15 AD. However, his influence extended far beyond his term, thanks in part to his successful establishment of a sort of religious dynasty. Five of his sons and his son-in-law Caiaphas would go on to serve as high priests. Ananias's influence was palpable not only in the religious arena, but also in the intricate web of politics, economics, and social dynamics of his time. During his tenure as the high priest, Ananias was a skilled mediator between the various forces at play in Judea. The Roman Empire, which had annexed Judea, was keen on keeping the region stable, and they saw in Ananias a willing partner who could help in managing the Jewish populace. For Rome, he was a useful tool for governance. For Ananias, this relationship allowed him to preserve the religious and social status quo that benefited him and his associates. His ability to maintain this delicate balance ensured his family's legacy in Jewish history but it also led to questions about his allegiance and authenticity as a religious leader. The temple in Jerusalem was under the custodianship of the high priest, and Ananias took full advantage of this, controlling the economics of the temple's offerings and activities. It was a lucrative position, involving the collection of taxes and offerings and overseeing commercial activities, such as money changing and the selling of sacrificial animals. While these actions kept the temple operations running smoothly, they also elicited criticisms. The most notable was the biblical episode where Jesus, infuriated by what he saw as a denigration of a sacred space, overturned the tables of the money changers. This action was a direct challenge to the established order presided over by Ananias and, by extension, an attack on the high priest's authority and credibility. Moreover, Ananias was part of the Sanhedrin, the High Jewish Council that played a crucial role in the arrest and subsequent trial of Jesus. While the Gospels focus more on the role of Caiaphas in these events, it's quite plausible that Ananias, 
the elder statesman had a considerable say in the proceedings. His political acumen and long-standing influence likely played into the council's decision-making processes, offering a perspective that was shaped by years of negotiation with Roman authorities and managing public sentiment. Contemporary accounts beyond the Bible, such as the works of the Jewish historian Josephus, paint a complex picture of Ananias. He was a man whose actions elicited both admiration and ire. For some, he was a pragmatic leader who did his best to protect his people under challenging circumstances. For others, he was a corrupt aristocrat, more concerned with preserving his own power than in serving God or his community. Either way, his legacy has left an indelible mark, serving as a subject of study and interpretation for historians, theologians, and scholars who continue to dissect the complicated tapestry of religious and political power structures in first century Judea. Caiaphas, the Calculating High Priest Joseph Caiaphas, commonly known as Caiaphas, is perhaps best remembered as the high priest who presided over the trial of Jesus and subsequently handed him over to Roman authorities for crucifixion. He served as the high priest of the temple in Jerusalem from around 18 AD to 36 AD, a period marked by social unrest, Roman occupation, and religious fervor. The son-in-law of Ananias, Caiaphas was part of a high priestly lineage that wielded significant influence in both religious and political circles. It's clear from historical accounts that Caiaphas was an astute political operator. Appointed by the Roman prefect Valerius Gratus, he maintained a delicate relationship with Roman authorities throughout his tenure. His role required him to act as a mediator between Rome and the Jewish community, a responsibility that demanded pragmatism and often morally ambiguous decisions. Caiaphas's primary objective was to maintain a semblance of stability in a region constantly teetering on the brink of revolt. To this end, he worked closely with the Roman rulers, including Pontius Pilate, to suppress any form of rebellion that could invite a violent Roman reprisal, thereby jeopardizing the relative autonomy of the Jewish religious establishment. The Gospels place Caiaphas at the center of the plot to arrest and try Jesus, citing his concern that Jesus' growing popularity would cause unrest and provoke Roman intervention. In the Gospel of John, it's Caiaphas who reportedly makes the chilling argument for Jesus' execution, stating, It is better for you that one man die for the people than that the whole nation perish. While the ethics of such a utilitarian argument can be debated, from Caiaphas's perspective, it represented a calculated decision to preserve the Jewish community from Roman wrath. His role in the crucifixion places Caiaphas in a particularly unfavorable light in the Christian narrative. He is seen as the epitome of corrupt religious authority, willing to sacrifice an innocent life to maintain his position and power. However, the actions of Caiaphas must also be examined in the broader context of first century Judea a time and place rife with political complexity and peril. From the standpoint of a high priest trying to navigate a volatile environment, his decisions, while morally troubling, were aimed at what he perceived to be the greater good for his community. Outside of the New Testament, Caiaphas is also mentioned in the works of the Jewish historian Flavius Josephus, though his portrayal is less detailed and less damning than in the Christian texts. Archaeological finds, most notably the discovery of an ossuary bearing his name, have provided additional layers of understanding to his life and times. Yet the man himself remains somewhat enigmatic, a figure characterized by both calculated political maneuvering and a deeply contentious religious legacy. The role in Jesus' arrest and trial. The arrest and subsequent trial of Jesus Christ represent watershed moments in religious history, events that would set in motion the crucifixion and the foundational narrative of Christianity. At the center of this maelstrom of spiritual, social, and political forces were Ananias and Caiaphas, the high priests who played pivotal roles in these events. While the two are often mentioned in the same breath, each had distinct motivations and actions that contributed to the final outcome. Caiaphas was the acting high priest at the time and was directly responsible for convening the Sanhedrin, the Jewish religious council, to judge Jesus. Concerned by Jesus' growing influence and what it might portend for Jewish-Roman relations, Caiaphas is said to have spearheaded the plot to arrest Jesus. According to the Gospels, it was he who made the case that it was 
better for one man to die for the people than for the whole nation to suffer at the hands of the Romans. His calculated approach aimed to prevent a popular uprising that could lead to a devastating Roman crackdown. When Jesus was brought before the Sanhedrin, it was Caiaphas who posed the defining question about his messianic claims, leading Jesus to affirm his divinity and, consequently, be convicted of blasphemy. Ananias, the father-in-law of Caiaphas, was not the acting high priest during the time of Jesus' trial, but was a powerful religious figure nonetheless. His influence likely extended to the inner chambers of the Sanhedrin, affecting the course of events behind the scenes. Given his history of cooperating with Roman authorities to maintain a delicate peace and his own power, it's reasonable to assume he would have supported Caiaphas's efforts to neutralize what they perceived to be the threat posed by Jesus. While not explicitly detailed in the biblical narrative, his tacit approval and possible counsel would have had a significant impact on the Sanhedrin's proceedings and verdict. The roles of Ananias and Caiaphas were not just those of passive functionaries carrying out religious duties. They were active agents who made choices, however controversial, that they believed would serve a greater purpose. Both priests operated in a complicated socio-political landscape where the religious and secular were deeply entangled. Their actions, viewed as a betrayal by those who followed Jesus but possibly seen as a necessary evil by others, served to maintain a fragile status quo in a time and place where upheaval could lead to catastrophe. The trial of Jesus, presided over by these high priests, culminated in a guilty verdict and his subsequent handover to Pontius Pilate, the Roman governor. Although the ultimate decision to crucify Jesus was a Roman one, the roles played by Ananias and Caiaphas in his arrest and trial were instrumental in shaping this outcome. Their actions have been subject to interpretation and debate for centuries, and have made them enduring, if contentious, figures in the annals of religious history. Religious and Political Motivations To fully understand the roles that Ananias and Caiaphas played in the arrest and trial of Jesus, it's crucial to dissect the religious and political motivations that guided their actions. These two high priests were not just religious figures, but also political leaders operating within the overlapping spheres of faith and governance in a region fraught with tension. Their decisions were shaped by a complex interplay of religious doctrine, personal beliefs, and political realities, making them actors in a high-stakes drama where the spiritual and the secular were inextricably linked. On the religious front, both men were tasked with upholding Jewish law and maintaining the sanctity of the temple. Jesus' provocative teachings, which challenged traditional interpretations of the law and openly questioned the authority of the religious elite, posed a direct threat to their role as the guardians of faith. His claims of divinity and the messianic undertones of his ministry were blasphemous in the eyes of Jewish orthodoxy. Ananias and Caiaphas, as high priests, bore the responsibility of protecting the Jewish people from what they perceived as heresy, making their involvement in the trial a religious duty in their view. Yet it wasn't solely religious orthodoxy that motivated them. Judea was under Roman occupation, and the temple authorities had a somewhat paradoxical relationship with their occupiers. While they held religious sway over the Jewish populace, they were also accountable to Roman authorities, and were often placed in positions where they had to. Balance the two. Failure to maintain this delicate equilibrium could result in dire consequences, not just for them, but for the Jewish community at large. The Romans were generally tolerant of local religions, but any form of unrest or rebellion was met with brutal suppression. In this context, the rise of Jesus as a popular figure was deeply problematic. To the masses, he might have been a spiritual leader, perhaps even the long-awaited Messiah. But to the Roman authorities, a charismatic individual capable of drawing large crowds was a potential instigator of rebellion. Caiaphas and Ananias had to consider this when deciding how to deal with Jesus. His arrest and trial can thus be seen as preemptive actions designed to avert a larger crisis. For Caiaphas especially, this was a calculated political move. Sacrifice one man to save the nation. Ananias, with his history of collaboration with the Romans, probably viewed Jesus through a similar lens. Although he was not the acting high priest at the time, his influence and outlook would have been aligned with the need to preserve stability at all costs. 
The status quo, however imperfect, offered a predictable framework within which both religious practices and political governance could continue. In that sense, removing the Jesus problem was likely seen as a necessary step to protect the community and its way of life. Criticism and public opinion. Public opinion is a fickle thing shaped by social, political, and religious currents that ebb and flow over time. For Ananias and Caiaphas, high priests during one of the most tumultuous periods in Judean history, the lens through which they were viewed was as complex as the roles they themselves played. Their actions elicited a spectrum of reactions, ranging from loyalty and reverence among their supporters to outrage and contempt among their critics. Over time, their images have undergone further scrutiny and reassessment, making them subjects of continuing debate and scholarly interest. In their lifetimes, Ananias and Caiaphas were figures of authority, revered by some for their leadership roles in the Jewish community. As the religious heads of their society, they commanded respect and influence, particularly among those who saw them as protectors of the Jewish faith and law. Their positions afforded them a degree of legitimacy that was bolstered by their respective families' long-standing involvement in the religious hierarchy. In this context, their decision to arrest and try Jesus could have been seen by their followers as an exercise of their religious duties, aimed at preserving the integrity of the faith. However, not everyone viewed them in such favorable terms. Jesus' followers and the communities that emerged around his teachings naturally saw Ananias and Caiaphas as adversaries who had played key roles in the crucifixion of their spiritual leader. They were vilified as agents of injustice, their names forever linked to one of the most notorious episodes in the Christian narrative. Even within the broader Jewish community, there were likely those who viewed their collaboration with the Roman authorities with suspicion and resentment. The arrest of Jesus could have been seen as an act of political expediency, betraying a willingness to compromise religious principles for the sake of maintaining a fragile peace with Rome. The scholarly assessments of Ananias and Caiaphas have been equally divided. While some historians see them as pragmatic leaders trying to navigate an impossibly complex political landscape, others accuse them of being self-serving opportunists who were more concerned with protecting their own power than serving their community. Biblical scholars, particularly those coming from a Christian perspective, have often cast them in a negative light, highlighting their roles in the trial and crucifixion of Jesus as evidence of their moral and spiritual failings. Yet it's essential to recognize that both men were products of their time, operating under constraints and pressures that are difficult to fully appreciate from a modern standpoint. Their actions, controversial as they may be, were shaped by a unique set of circumstances, the occupation of Judea by a foreign power, the inherent tensions between religious and political authority, and the emergence of a charismatic figure whose teachings threatened to upend the existing social and religious order, their end and legacy. The fates of Ananias and Caiaphas are entwined not just with the history of Judea and the birth of Christianity, but also with the ways in which their lives came to an end. While the accounts about their deaths are not as thoroughly documented as other aspects of their lives, what is clear is that both left behind complex legacies that continue to spark discussion and interpretation. Ananias, whose tenure as high priest was fraught with tension and controversy, eventually fell out of favor. According to historical accounts, he was assassinated during the early stages of the First Jewish-Roman War around 66 CE, likely a casualty of the political and social turmoil that engulfed Judea at that time. His death marked a violent end to a career that had been characterized by its contentiousness both within and outside the religious community. Ananias's actions during his lifetime left an indelible imprint on how the high priesthood was viewed, with his abrasive manner and questionable dealings undermining the institution's integrity in the eyes of many. Caiaphas's end was less dramatic but no less significant. He was removed from the high priesthood around 36 CE, likely due to his inability to maintain order during a period of rising tension between the Jewish populace and Roman occupiers. Although details about his later life are scarce, it is generally believed that he lived out his remaining years in relative obscurity, his influence waning after his removal from power. Yet, despite this decline, his impact on the events leading up to the crucifixion of Jesus 
has cemented his place in history as one of the most consequential religious figures of his era. Their legacies are complex and often viewed through the lens of religious and ethical debate. For many Christians, Ananias and Caiaphas are seen as antagonists in the foundational narrative of their faith, figures who contributed to the arrest and crucifixion of Jesus. In this context, they serve as cautionary examples of how religious authority can be misused for personal or political gain. Their roles in these events have been subject to centuries of theological reflection, with numerous biblical commentaries and sermons dissecting their actions for moral and spiritual lessons. Yet, from a broader historical perspective, both men also exemplify the challenges and dilemmas faced by Jewish leaders under Roman occupation. Straddling the line between collaboration and resistance, they had to navigate a perilous path, juggling the demands of a foreign power with the expectations of their own community, whether one views their choices as pragmatic survivalism or as complicity with an oppressive regime, it is clear that their actions were shaped by the complex political realities of their time. 